Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown, and today we're going to look at the repasting of my uh, Lenovo Yoga 720. And if you haven't uh, seen it already, I did a good full review on it. Um, if you click up here, and uh, it is an excellent uh, two-in-one notebook if you're a student, a business traveler. Um, it uh, has a, it's a two-in-one notebook with pen support, um, so you can sketch, take notes, and it also has a, a GTX 1050 graphics card in, so it can game on the go. Uh, but the problem with it is that it did get hot. Now, Lenovo disabled the, uh, the turbo boost with that in mind. And uh, certainly the temperatures were generally okay on there. I think Battlefield 1, it still got hot. Um, but uh, the problem is the fans don't go very fast. So it's quiet, but it doesn't keep it cool. So I thought, let's uh, take it apart and uh, see if we can repaste it. So um, I used uh, uh, the Thermal Grizzly uh, Conductor Nort. Um, but I did run out of it, so I only put that on the CPU, and I used a uh, Thermal Grizzly Aeronaut on the GPU. So we'll have a quick look at that, the process, and then we'll finish up with some charts. Okay, you start off by removing the Torx 5 screws from uh, the periphery and one in the center, and prise it up using a uh, plastic card, and it's a, an aluminum lid, and... Uh, here you've got the, the, the heat, two heat sinks here. Um, so uh, the tools I'm using, I have got uh, some uh, Arctic uh, cleaner and uh, surface preparer solutions. Some electrical tape, um, Super 33 Plus electrical tape. And the thermal, I mean the thermal Grizzly uh, conductor note paste. Yeah, so we'll start off by uh, removing the, uh, the the heat sinks here. These screws are spring loaded. Okay, then you've got to remove the fan ones. If you find that the heat sink uh, won't uh, come out um, after all the screws are removed, you uh, can use a hairdryer just to uh, heat up. Uh, the thermal paste so uh, it uh, can pull out a bit easier. But before you can pull out the heatsink, uh, you must disconnect the, uh, the fans, the little white uh, plugs that uh, just use a little flathead screwdriver and uh, sort of wedge them out of the connector. Here you can see the paste on the heatsinks. The GPU is on the left of the picture and the CPU on the right. Now we must uh, clean off the uh, thermal paste. Also clean the paste off the heat sinks. Now since uh, liquid metal is uh, conductive, um, you must only put it on uh, copper heat sinks, no aluminum. And uh, also I unlock recommended to, to put this electrical tape down. It's thin and it uh, helps uh, it uh, from uh, spreading onto uh, any uh, contact points. So uh, preventing any uh, shorting. So once all uh, taped up with the electrical tape um, around the CPU area, um, it's time to clean up the CPU heat spreader with the uh, Arctic Silver Surface Purifier to, to make it nice and clean. And uh, now it's time to apply the thermal paste. In uh, this case, it is the uh, Thermal Grizzly Conductor Nort. It comes in a uh, black syringe, gently press it down and put a rice sized bead on the heat spreader. Now spreading liquid metal is rather tricky. It takes some practice. Um, I found it was best to uh, grab the sort of top surface tension, as it were, of the liquid metal and, uh, and drag it around the heat spreader. And it, uh, just take your time and uh, get a nice thin layer covering the, the whole surface. Once you're finished with the CPU, it's time to do the GPU. Now, unfortunately, I ran out of conductor naught. So I just used a regular uh, thermal paste aeronaut. It spreads much easier and there's no need to do any uh, taping up with the, uh, the electrical tape in that, that instance. Once you've finished uh, repasting, it's time to put the heat sinks back on, reattach the fans and uh, put the, uh, the back lid back on. All right, so it's fairly easy to do, pretty seamless. Um, so let's have a look at the results. So in uh, Time Spy, um, we did uh, the... Uh, Turbo uh, activated with no undervolt. Um, with a stock paste, the CPU was at 99 uh, Celsius, and at uh, the repasting, it was at 95. So a nice reduction of four degrees there. Um, the GPU uh, went up 
Um, so obviously that uh, Aeronaut wasn't particularly any good. Um, so uh, it certainly went up from 74 to 81. Now looking at uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, um, we have uh, Turbo Boost uh, enabled first off and with no undervolt. Uh, the stock pace, the CPU was at 99 degrees. That was pretty hot. Uh, repacing it, it went all the way down to 85. So that was a success. And uh, the GPU again increased. It went from 78 to 85. So I don't recommend that uh, Aeronaut pace at all. I might, uh, I think I'm gonna have to repace it again. Now looking at uh, with uh, the Turbo Boost, but uh, with an undervolt, uh, the stock pace was 90 degrees on the CPU and repacing it, it went down to 84. Uh, the GPU was a little bit closer this time, 79 with the stock pace to the Aeronaut at 81. Uh, a quick look at Battlefield 1. Stock settings here, totally stock. And the uh, so therefore there's no turbo, uh, there's no turbo booster being enabled. Um, stock pace, the CPU was at uh, 93. Repacing it with the uh, liquid metal, it went down to 86. So that was nice. Uh, the GPU with the Aeronaut was 84 and it stock at 81. So again, the Aeronaut didn't do its job there. Activating the, the turbo boost and undervolting, the stock paste was 97 degrees uh, and even the liquid metal couldn't cope there. It stayed at 97 degrees. Uh, the GPU at uh, 83 stock paste and 89 with the Aeronaut. So to conclude, basically, it's certainly worthwhile, I think, uh, repacing it with liquid metal, um, the uh, thermal grizzly um, conductor note certainly generally does a good job. It decreased the, uh, the temperatures on average by six degrees Celsius, so that's worth doing. The uh, the aeronaut paste didn't do it all very well, um, so I think I'm going to redo it again with liquid metal later on. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that. If you found it useful, thumbs up if you did, and uh, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Thanks for watching. Bye.